Hey everyone, welcome back for the episode 2 of Pipe and Fresco. And in today's session, what we'll be covering is a simple method that will allow you to easily combine multiple CSV files using uh, pandas. So, the first thing we're going to do is because we're downloading new content, we are going to go into our Python for SEO Git folder. So, for example, mine is in this specific uh, location. So, cd into Python for SEO. And once you're in that Python folder, uh, what you want to do is just do pwd. And if you were to do ls minus a, you can see all the hidden, fo uh, hidden files and folders. And you can see here we have this Git repository that we cloned in episode one. So what we would like to do is actually download the next lecture and the new content. So we're just going to do git pull origin master. So again, this is pulling from the online uh, repository of the origin uh, fork, the master branch. So that's the same command that you can use. And essentially what's happened here is we've created uh, and downloaded all the content online and we now have that in our local repository. So if we just clear the terminal clear, we go ls, you can now see that we've got the second lecture called CSV, uh, bulk CSV operations. So let's load up a Jupyter Notebook server by typing in Jupyter Notebook. And for the purpose of today, I have already downloaded some uh, top page CSV reports that we can utilize. And I will just go and show you where these are. So if I go into the second one, you can see we have this data folder by CD in here. You can see if I clear this, ls this. So you've got a range of different CSVs. And, you know, this method is going to work whether you've got two CSVs, five, 10, 100, 500. Let's go to the starter code. And we're going to uh, code along a little bit of this through. So let's do it. The first thing that we're going to import is several uh, Python packages. We have our OS library that allows us to um, work with the operating system. And we also have glob that allows us to easily detect file names and pandas that we imported from the previous session. Now, the way that we're going to change directory is we're going to use os.chdir uh, and then the directory we want to go into. So by writing pwd, for my specific place, I ended up here. So you can see Imran and James projects, Python for SEO, and we can do that in the Jupyter Notebook as well with uh, a exclamation mark before. So you can see here, this is where I have got my specific file directory. You can use exclamation mark to run your Linux or Unix commands uh, inside of Jupyter Notebook. So you can see here, ls, this is what we've got. I would like to start by getting all of the file names in this current working directory and changing them to this working directory that I wanted to work in. So obviously you can see we've got this data one and I want to CD into there so that I can see all of those individual files that I showed you in the, term in the terminal. So I'm going to do C and then I'm going to do and then we can do that. And you can now check the difference. So if we PWD again, for, uh, which is just showing our current working directory, we've now actually gone down a level. And if we LS now instead, you can see we're now at the level where all of these CSV files are, which is good. So now that we're at the same level and we're in the current working directory as all these CSV files, we can now identify all the file names and uh, concatenate them using pandas. So the way that we're going to be doing that is we need to first say which kind of file extension we're looking for. Now, I know I'm looking for .csv files, which are all of these. So that's my file extension. And then the next thing I'm going to do is do all file names, create a variable. I'm going to do for i in glob.glob, .glob, and I'm going to pass an f string. And when you do an f string, essentially you can pass in va uh, variables. And I did this previously, but let me just demonstrate again. So if you have like a value equal to five and you print the string, you can go, this is a cool string. And then we can put a value here. So we can use our variables inside of strings. So we're going to be doing a list comprehension, which again is just creating a list and looping over a series of file names. 
Uh, so we're going to be doing for i in glob dot glob, and then we're going to do a f string here and a star, and then we're going to match against the file extension, and then we're going to end the string here, and then we're going to do i. And let's just make sure that's the same extension. There we go. Cool. And so if we just print this to start with, all file names, you can see we've now picked up all of these CSV file names and we can query it because it's a Python list. So we can get the first one, we can get the first and the, uh, the second and third one. Uh, yeah, so we can, yeah. We can query it like a list, which is great because it is a list. So we'll create some new cells here. And then basically what we're going to do is we just want to get one of them to start with and just to make sure that we can actually read uh, data into a, a pandas data frame from a CSV. So you can see here we have one P, uh, PP Python. So let's take that as a CSV file. And I'm just going to add some spacing here. So you can see I'm calling this a DF. Now I know this is going to break and it's the same reason why in the previous lectures. So what we need to do is we need to add a tab delimiter and then we also need to change the encoding type from UTF-8 uh, to UTF-16. Now if we show the data frame, we can see here, here's all the URLs that we have and we can print the, uh, we can show the shape, which is 92 rows and 11 columns. So that we're gonna to need to use a tab delimiter and a UTF-16 encoding. Let's now set up a for loop that will allow us to read in all of the CSV files from those file names. So we're gonna go for file in all file names. I just so I show you this. So you can see here, we're getting all of those. And then what we're going to do is pd.read csv file. We're going to pass in these extra parameters. Now we're reading all of these CSVs and they're currently indexable at a list position. So you can see here that's one data frame, that's a second data frame, that's a third data frame, which is cool. And now, and now what we're going to do is wrap the entire list inside of pd.concat like this which will concatenate every data frame vertically. So data frame one uh, will be stacked, data frame two will be stacked on data frame one, data frame three will be stacked against data frame one and two. So they're being vertically stacked basically as rows. And then we can save all this back to DF. Now, if you see, we've got a lot more rows, which is really cool. Okay, so the final part of this is basically we would like to go back up one level in our current working directory. So again, if we saw uh, exclamation mark PWD, we're still in that data uh, subfolder and we would like to go back up to here. So we can do this by just doing is.chdir and then just doing a double dot. And you can now see we've gone up one parent level, which is cool. So we can now take that data frame, which is a DF, and just do DF to CSV, combined data dot CSV. We just created this at uh, 11.39. So yeah, this is a really quick and simple way that you can combine as many CSV files as possible. Um, it's also worth bearing in mind that if you are using different CSV files, as in there is a different number of columns, or the columns have different values, then this method will not work. All of the CSVs need to be appropriately formatted um, because you are essentially just stacking uh, data frames rows on rows. So if the columns were slightly different, but they were the same number of columns, then you would be mixing data types. So it's always worth bearing in mind that yes, you can do this and you can concatenate different data frames together, but just make sure that the data that you're concatenating is exactly the same format in each CSV. So yeah, thanks a lot for tuning in. And uh, also if you'd like to subscribe, um, feel free to do that. And uh, if you'd like to support the, the course, uh, there's some links below in the YouTube channel. Yep, cool, see you again, bye.